here where the canal comes into the diversion tunnel. Now we're looking south, uh, crossing here from South Street. We begin with extreme heat baking communities across the country. Almost 90 million Americans are experiencing temperatures above 90 degrees today. An extreme set of cascading climate events is leading to a higher mortality rate of Chinook salmon along the Sacramento River. With wildfires burning across California, the death toll is now rising. State water officials say they will only get 5% of requested water supply to the state water project, which provides water for 27 million people who rely on reservoirs. California's drought has gone from bad to catastrophic, and from farms to family homes, almost everyone is experiencing the impacts. For the first time in more than 100 years, customers of the Anderson Cottonwood Irrigation District are without water. I can't believe they shut down that canal. There's no way people are going to be able to survive that. They estimated the impact was $1.4 billion to the economy. This is the largest environmental impact of any discretionary decision in the state of California. There was no willingness to fight. There was no fight at all. Was this neglect? Was this mismanagement? Was this corruption? I don't think they really realized the ramifications of what this was going to do. This area was a nice green paradise oasis that is now dried up. Hold on to your hat, it's gonna be a wild ride. It's gonna be a wild ride. Hi, my name is Tyler Ferris, and I'm the director of Acid Canal. I first heard about what was going on with the Anderson Cottonwood Irrigation District in May of 2022. And at first, I had no idea what an irrigation district was. I'd never heard about the ACID. Uh, I've lived here almost my whole life, so I've seen it, but I had never really asked the question of, hey, what are these open ditches? So as soon as I heard about uh, the water restriction, uh, water allocation, and then also the water sale, at that time, uh, we were already invested in the project. We had been to uh, a board meeting already, and we had seen that the community um, in the Anderson Cottonwood Irrigation District was really surprised and shocked and completely confused. This is the irrigation ditch that should be full of water. Every bit of it, this should all be green. Yeah, I have to say this really makes me sick. Over a hundred years, these trees have been watered. So when we entered the scene, we really were capturing day to day, hour to hour of what was happening to the, the people, um, the water users at the ACID. Fortunately, I had connections in the Anderson Cottonwood area, and so that really opened some doors faster than usual. We met a lot of people at board meetings, we asked a lot of questions there, um, but really our project started with just talking with community members. What was happening on their land, what was going on in their lives, how did this negatively affect them. Uh, then we started realizing, especially myself, is how confusing water management in California is. And just to understand some of these people that have been living there for so long, talk about this stuff, I was so confused. So I realized, okay, if we're gonna communicate this to the viewer, we really need to understand it ourselves. Got Tom, getting ready. Day one. I am TL Green. I was the producer and sound recordist on Acid Canal. Some of the early challenges with the film is water management is a very complicated process, but in the same stroke, you have people that are really hurting that are very angry. And in that environment, it can be kind of hard to tell like what's actually happening and what's more like the rumor mill and maybe things that are getting hyperbolized. So you really have to talk to a lot of different people to fully get the picture of what's happening and fully understand where to go with the story to make sure that you're telling a story that's authentic and honest. We are limiting it to two minutes each. The board and staff will not be responding. The board meetings didn't create a forum for us to come together. So some of the biggest stand-up moments were at these board meetings, the ACID board meetings. It was just interesting to us as we're trying to learn all of these things and also 
realizing that these the ACID water users are also kind of in the same boat. So this program, they were limiting how long you could talk. They were being very dismissive of people. So it felt almost like two groups, like these competing groups. These board meetings were really fascinating because after each one, you know, two to three hour board meetings in the evenings, uh, my producer Tom and I were just kind of like sitting reeling, trying to figure out, wait, what is going on, number one? And number two, how do we even understand or explain this? So getting into interviews with Bureau of Reclamation, the State Water Board, it gave us some clarity. Uh, in some ways it gave us clarity, in other ways it gave us more questions and, and we were more confused. So the Sacramento River Settlement contractors are about 130 contractors that the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation had to settle water rights with along the Sacramento River because they predated Shasta Dam. And so when we actually got into the edit, it was a real big balance on telling the stories of these people that were involved, that were affected by um, the loss of water, while also educating the viewer to even understand the most basic basic things in the water world, but for us, we'd never even heard of these, these terms or ideas. Good morning. Let's go. My name is Kevin Cooley. I am a cinematographer in Northern California and was the director of photography on Acid Canal. When I first heard of what was going on just 15 minutes south of where we live, it was like, wait, I want to be a part of that. And also, like a lot of people, try to figure out what is going on, where, where does this story lead? So we began talking about the visual language of the film and both agreed that we really wanted to capture it in, um, in like a naturalistic way so that on many of the days when we were shooting in 100 plus degree weather, that that comes across on film and that the viewers feel like, oh yeah, these guys were standing out in a dry, waterless farm field um, and it's 115 out. So we really wanted to keep that that hot aspect, that natural aspect to it. This alone to this point has cost me over $120,000, not including the extra costs that I'll have in the future of replacing cows. So I probably only have one year of this in me. If the water's gone again, uh, I probably am too. So one of my biggest takeaways in terms of filmmaking from this whole process has just been to stay the course. You know, tenacity is such an important part of the process, especially when you have a story that you're not sure how it's going to develop. You don't know where it's going to go. Um, being able to kind of hold on and uh, roll with the punches is a skill that will really serve you well uh, in filmmaking. I think one of the biggest challenges for me was really keeping the story unbiased. There was a lot of rumors, a lot of speculations, a lot of confusing things, because there wasn't a lot of communication on, on any fronts. Uh, even to get to the federal government, the uh, Bureau of Reclamation, it took us about six months to get there, to get that interview. So at this point, we had captured a majority of the footage from what was happening on uh, in the ACID. The Sacramento Settlement Contractors that area had a dramatic impact, which generally doesn't occur because they're a higher, higher priority pre-existing right. So during the editing process, it was really finding a balance. We didn't want to make certain individuals look really bad. When we're dealt the cards we're dealt, we just do the best we can. We also didn't know what was going to happen with the ACID election going on that year. Uh, with what was happening with the, the weather, would rain come or not. The edit was really evolving as the story was going on. It's as a group that we've done this. If we get water again, it will be because they stood up. I'm just proud to be part of this community. I would love to represent them. I would love to help them any way I can. That's why I want to run. One of the great things that TL and I did on this project is we mapped out everything from the get-go. We had document logs, we had notes from each shoot day. We really laid it out for us so that when we got into the edit, we were not confused by the 60 days of capture, 20 terabytes of media that we had to get through for this edit. And it also helped me kind of stay aligned with the vision of the project. Although so many things changed throughout the, the capture of the project, it really held true to what our vision was, was to communicate what was going on in the community at the time and how water management works in California. 
The water comes from precipitation, so it's coming down. There's areas where that precipitation will filter into the ground, and it slowly reaches those levels of the aquifer. My name is Jesse Lawson. I own Sundial Studios here in uh, Redding, California. I was the composer and mixer of Acid Canal. So I had recently opened up the studio and connected with Tyler. I basically told him, hey, I would love to do the music for it. So he asked me if I would be a part of the project and I was so excited and here we are. Over the next two years, if that ACID, if it stays closed, there's gonna be a huge washout. There's no way people are gonna be able to survive that. A big thing we really wanted to create when Tyler had first come to me is, he, you know, he wanted this uh, hot, uncomfortable, almost itchy feeling. One of the days we actually had Tyler come in and we mic'd up an old acoustic guitar I had and, and put this, you know, kind of big reverb sound on it. And he actually just tapped on the guitar. It just kind of brought you into what's what's next. And so I think throughout the the film, we, we really tried to uh, keep keep the progression moving um, without being distracting. And I and I think we we accomplished that. Are these ponds fully dry right now? Yeah, that's what we call a domestic property, mm -hmm. but yeah, every one of those ponds is dry. I just wanna thank you all for being here, for participating in this behind the scenes event. Uh, we really hope you enjoy the film in the future. Currently, we're in uh, the process of distribution and trying to figure out how we can get it to some of these streaming platforms so that we can get it out to the, the broad audience. Uh, this is a really big deal for me and, and our team, and we're just so excited to share this with you all.